This is your 28storms.com cyclone update for Tropical Cyclone Grant located near Australia and newly formed Tropical Cyclone 6B located in the Bay of Bengal as of this Monday the 26th of December. Starting first with Grant we see that Grant has weakened down to a category 1 ever since making landfall across the top end of Australia and the latest forecast from the Bureau of Meteorology shows further weakening into a tropical low but it is forecast to turn more toward the east over the next couple of days and possibly beginning to emerge over the Gulf of Carpentaria as early as the afternoon of the 28th. Meanwhile, the latest forecast from the U.S. Joint Typhoon Warning Center is quite similar with the cyclone weakening below cyclone status but then beginning to re-intensify once over the Gulf, but nothing overly significant before a second landfall occurs over the Cape York Peninsula. As we turn to the latest satellite imagery, we are beginning to use the visible since the daylight is already underway, and we can see that the center of circulation is now pressing well to the south and far removed from its energy source, that being the ocean, so significant weakening is occurring. This is also confirmed by the enhanced infrared. We no longer see those significant convective blowups near the center, but the overall structure of the storm still appears to be solid with a well-defined surface circulation and the water vapor still reveals that the poleward outflow channel and the equatorward outflow channels are fairly healthy. So this system could maintain itself a little bit better over land due to the favorable upper level conditions, but still several days over land is going to take this system below cyclone status, but the overall pattern is conducive for more development once it reemerges back over the gulf. Here is another look at the cyclone using a radar and satellite mosaic composite of Australia courtesy of the weatherchaser.com and the threat of heavy rainfall over the top end will continue for at least the next 24 to 48 hours. The latest wind shear product from the University of Wisconsin also shows the favorable upper level ridge is still in place over the Arafura Sea extending southeastward into the Gulf of Carpentaria where the sea surface temperatures are very favorable so that combined with the very low wind shear being less than 10 knots this system should very well begin to reemerge and intensify. The main question is how long will the center stay over land and that is really the only thing that really is making the redevelopment part of the forecast somewhat questionable. And here is the latest look at the sea surface temperatures across the region. They are a little bit cooler now near the Coburg Peninsula thanks to our tropical cyclone being nearly stationary there for several days in a row, but some of the untapped waters near the Gulf are still very warm and exceeding 26 to 28 degrees Celsius. The following is the latest forecast from the GFS model and this particular model still shows our cyclone hovering about the Northern Territory for the next 24 to 48 hours, but as we work our way into 12Z on Wednesday, that is when the cyclone is forecast to make a second landfall near the Cape York Peninsula, and then it will gradually weaken over the Coral Sea based on this solution. And this is the five-day GFS accumulated precipitation forecast, still showing that threat of heavy rainfall over interior portions of the Northern Territory, as the center is still nearly stationary or drifting very slowly toward the southeast, and then once the storm begins to redevelop over the Gulf, it should begin to generate some heavier convection before making that second landfall. However, as has been the case throughout the life of Tropical Cyclone Grant, there are some opposing scenarios, and the latest one is being brought forth to us by the latest 12Z run of the ECMWF model. The European is showing significant weakening while the storm is still over land, and as we go into day 4 and day 5, all we really have left is a broad area of low pressure remaining over the Gulf of Carpentaria. And if we're dealing with nothing more than a broad low center, then the troughiness in the mid-levels of the atmosphere over Queensland and the Coral Sea would have a harder time fully picking up this system. So therefore, as we go deeper into the forecast period toward day 7 and day 8, the storm is actually left behind and it begins to drift back toward the west into the Northern Territory. So that is another option that we will have to closely monitor. So the bottom line is that it's just a wait and see game over the next one to two days to see how much is left of Cyclone Grant by the time the low pressure center begins to reemerge over open waters. If we still see a well-defined surface circulation by then, then the chances of redevelopment would be fairly high, but that remains to be seen. Meanwhile, we have been anticipating tropical cyclone development in the Bay of Bengal for the past several days and the U.S. Joint Typhoon Warning Center is issuing advisories on this newly classified system. They are forecasting a landfall in southeast India, just to the south of Chennai. Furthermore, the latest update from the India Meteorological Department is also considering the system a depression, 
and their forecast track does show a landfall in the same general region. The latest enhanced infrared animation of the entire Indian Ocean shows our tropical cyclone quite well to the northeast of Sri Lanka. Thankfully the system has pulled a little bit more toward the north over the last 24 to 36 hours which is going to greatly reduce the threat of heavy rainfall over Sri Lanka and we certainly could use that because we've been hit hard over the past month due to the previous tropical cyclone that was in the region and for India it does look like the cyclone will be moving in your direction but do notice based on the latest water vapor animation that we do have a lot of sinking dry air behind the trough that has moved in and if some of this dry air begins to work into the inner circulation of the system then that could greatly weaken the chances of this system ever becoming a very strong cyclone and also it would help to lessen the overall threat of heavy rainfall and flooding to some extent. The latest zoomed in enhanced infrared of the storm would indicate that the cyclone is fairly healthy with a lot of robust and intense convection. However, as we turn to the new daytime visible satellite imagery, it is fairly apparent that the center is a little bit to the northeast of that convection and it's actually partially exposed with much of the thunderstorm activity located well to the southwest of the center. Additionally, the latest water vapor shows a fairly diffluent pattern over the northern and western semicircles of the cyclone with a favorable outflow pattern. However, it still appears to be restricted in the southeast quadrant due to some southeasterly wind shear, and this could also aid in some dry air entrainment into the center if this wind shear and dry air persist near the cyclone for long enough. The latest microwave satellite also confirms that the cyclone appears to have some trouble with dry air and vertical wind shear. This is the position of the center, and all of the strongest convection is southwest of it. Despite the current problems with wind shear and dry air, some of the latest dynamical model forecasts are still indicating strengthening over the next 72 to 96 hours. This is the latest forecast from the ECMWF model. The storm is still somewhat disorganized based on the current look, but as we go into day one, two, and three, it looks as though the forecast of the storm is for more intensification all the way up until landfall between day four and day five in the general location of Chennai, India, and this is the primary region where we do expect the risk of strong damaging winds and isolated flooding. So we will keep an eye on both of these tropical cyclones for you here at 28storms.com cycloned. Stay tuned for more updates.